All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to test. Well, first, first thing we're going to do is we're going to test a Rev 1 to make sure it is operating correctly. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to take the Marvel Air 2 oil, and I'm going to put a dot, just a dot only, right at the bearing. Just like that. Just a dot. I'm going to give him a little spin here. Okay. Then I'm going to put another dot. This bearing is down inside the housing. Put a tiny dot. And it's going to fall in there. And we're going to give him a twist. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. So now the bearings are lubed. Okay. Whoop. Oh, crumbs. There he went. Damn it. Oh, really? Oh, man. He went way over here. And, uh, unfortunately, we don't need to use laser to find him. But he's back. Okay. So now, I've already done the 280 and the other Rev 1. We're going to just test the first Rev 1 and see if it falls within the limits that we've set. Now, on the Rev 1, there's a red dot. Okay, usually, that is not the one. Usually, I stamp them so that when they're facing this way, they turn towards us. But we're going to just hook it up with the red to the red dot. And well, I want to get this guy to grab him by that guy. Okay, I want to get this guy. If I can, get him to grab that hole right there. Okay, got him. All right. Now, let's bring him around. Oh, no, what? Let's try that again. Oof, there, I'm going to have to fix these alligator clips because they are getting so worn out. Okay, so, as I said... The red dot is usually in reverse from, from most locomotives. Not all, but a lot of them. And you came off again. I'm going to hook you right in that spot. Come on, grab him. There. Okay. Let's go ahead and put them in this little vise. Next time I go to the store, I'm going to get another one of these vices. I got it at a surplus store. Okay, now, over here, we're set at zero. Let's turn them up to... Well, you look right here. Oh, he's already turning. Oh my goodness, I'm not even at one volt yet. Okay, so now, so now let's just check him to see if he's in performance range at, let's go to 5 volts like we did on an after, and that thing was drawing like 0. 0.6. Rev 1 at 5 volts is drawing, right at the moment, 0. 0.4. See this final number here as it uh, goes back and forth? As it gets broken in that number will start to drop. Okay, let's check him at about nine volts. We're just checking this one now. We don't need to break it in. When it reaches the final destination, then, then it'll get broken. in. Let's say nine, whoops. We gotta get our fine guy here. Nine volts. 0 0.05 and dropping. Let me, I'm going to put my finger on the shaft and give it a little load here, okay? Okay, I can't. At 9 volts, I cannot pinch it because it's burning my fingers. Um, but look at that. At 9 volts, with a load that I cannot pinch with my fingers... We are not even making it to point two. That's one of the things that make these, makes these great. Where that jet motor was drawing over an amp, this is not even up to point one amps. If we put a load on it, a heavy load, like me trying to pinch it shut here. Okay, that's me pinching. That's, uh, without burning my fingers. Okay, I can't get it to... Uh, 
All right, at the most, I got a point three at nine volts. Now, on your DCC layout, and on my layout that I'm at 18 volts, this is half speed. And this thing is gonna, gonna drop if we break it in. But right now, it's performing excellent. Let's go ahead and let's uh, switch them. Okay, we'll switch them in another direction. Okay, now, you see that? We started out at .06. It's gonna drop. I can't tell you how much I just wanna sit here and let this thing totally break in. Put a little load on it. Okay, right there, that is me pinching it and burning my fingers. We did not make point three. As this breaks in, it's gonna drop. So this motor is like really, really good. And good to go okay so let's go ahead and stop him turn to zero all right so that is a test to see if the motor is in the right range and it is so now we're going to hook up the second rev one and we're going to watch it again but this one i'm going to let break in So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna start it. We're gonna get it to point nine. Remember, we were at about what point zero point zero five or so. Okay, let's bring them up. To nine. There we go. Point zero five. We're still in the right range. Now this one, I'm gonna leave for about five minutes. Now I'm gonna switch his direction in about five minutes. We're gonna come back and we're gonna check him. All right, here we go. 10 minutes in either direction. Here's what we got. We're stable at this, 0 0.05 at nine volts. That's pretty dang good. I'm gonna put a load on it. My fingers, I don't wanna burn my fingers, but I can hardly. <sighs> Burning my fingers, I can get it up to 0.3 something. So it's not, this is definitely not going to tax your DCC system because several of these are not even going to equal one amp. Let's turn them up. Let's turn them up to uh, 22 volts. He's at 0 0.06. Now the reason why it sounds loud is because I got it clamped into that vice. But this motor was meant to take this. I am not going to be putting my fingers on here too hard because it with it burns my fingers just doing this. Okay, your layout is not going to go that high. Let's say that you have, like me, an 18 volt layout. Let's say I max out the power and everything and put big oh man, listen, this thing burnt. It burns my fingers. Oh yeah, that was a burn right there. Ouch. Okay. So burning my fingers. Look at that. That is really, really good to go. That's what we like to see. Let's take them down 12 volts and see what we got. Oop. Let's turn up the fine. Okay, 12 volts. We're at zero 0.5, and I'm putting a little, oh yeah, and that right there burns my fingers. That burns my fingers, um, oh man, okay, that, that is not, that is painful. I can't stop it, and, but there it is, it's zero 0.5, zero 0.5, take him way down here to, Okay, let's say normal operating is right around five volts. Okay. That is me pinching him. He is still turning, and that's enough of that for me. And I didn't make point three. Ah, yeah. Yeah, that 
that's some burn. Okay, this guy has gone both directions for longer than you really need to do it, and that's it. He's broke in. All right, one last look. See, I'm hanging him upside down, just hanging him by the leads, and you can't hear anything. This workbench will transmit sound. There is 11 volts. That's how quiet it is, 11 volts, and we're only pulling 0 0.04. And if I put a little bit of load on there, oh, man, it's in 0 0.06 at the most. Oh, man. Okay. That's good to go. Now we've got a 280. And I'm just going to hang this guy from the workbench. And right now he's at zero. Let's turn him up to four. Let's turn him to five so we can compare. Now the 280 being a size two is 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 much, and this has a heat shield. So this guy is much more robust than even the Rev1. And by robust, I mean this thing was meant for extreme conditions. That's why it has a heat shield on it. Unfortunately, it only fits in very large shells, such as ancient blue box non-scale width hoods and F-type units. So let's take a look at him on the thing here. So he, he's been lubed. He's starting out right now, 5 volts at 0.03. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna let him sit. Actually, we're gonna take him up to about nine. And this is a thirty-two volt motor, so it should be. It should, by default, have better settings. Have better power than the, even the Rev1. I think the Rev1 at this is 0 .05 and the 280 is going at 0 .04 which is about right because it's power curve. The power curve on this guy is somewhere around 17-18 volts is where its main torque is going to be located at where its primary torque is we we'll let this guy sit now for five minutes each direction okay, this and see what happens he has now been on here for a while more than the 10 minutes and let's check him on the monitor right there 0 0.04 this guy is good to go he doesn't go any lower than that and so at nine volts ran him both directions as you can see I switched him around so he ran both directions for at least probably 10 minutes each or more okay and on 9 volts he is pulling like 0 0.04 or less and that is good to go that's really good this guy's fully broken He's not even really warm. Um, because that's how you do it. You need what you need to do is you gotta you gotta get some air tool oil on the bearings. Those phosphor bronze bearings that are in the ends of each motor. You, this one you, you can see it when they got this cap here. It's down in there, but it's behind that cap, and only a dot. Run it each direction, nine volts, a few minutes, and you're done. And you, then you've got, you can expect roughly 25% performance improvement by following that procedure as we've done with these guys. One of these guys is now good, and one of them is just tested. So when they get to their final destinations, um, they will be run in at about 9 volts, 5 minutes each direction, and they're going to be good. They're going to have their best performance at that at that uh, level and that's something you can do and how do you do it okay let's take a look down here 
There is a Tech 2. Here is, okay, the blue stands in for the black wire and the yellow stands in for the red wire. Clip your motor onto there. You turn her up to three quarters. Wait, three quarters, okay? You turn up about three quarters and you run each way, five directions. And when you're doing this, you can switch the direction. That's how you do it. That's how you break in a motor. And not just break it in, but get it ready for good service and good reliability. And there it is. That's all there is to it. And I think 25% improvement is really good. But more importantly, getting it to a stable draw on amps is even better. Once it's stable, then you know what to expect. And if you're doing speed matching and stuff, a stable amp draw is really, really helpful for doing speed matching in DCC. That's it. There it is. I'm calling it. That's good to go.